Hi everyone, my name is Penny and today we're going to learn how to make a mouse pinata. So hopefully you have like a square box like this, uh, which used to have tissues in it. If it still has tissues in it, take the tissues out and put them aside to use whenever you need them. And you should have one of these and possibly some string and some tape. Um, let me just go find my tape. I think I put it somewhere else. Aha! Okay, so these are the ingredients we need to make our mouse. So I know that this square box doesn't look a whole bunch like a mouse yet, and maybe it won't when we're done either, but we'll try. <laughs> First of all, what I'd like you to do is turn the box over so that if there's an opening that it's facing downward and then take your toilet paper roll and rip it in half. And if you need help with this, oh, it's a little difficult. Let me see. Ah, you've got to have pretty strong fingers. So maybe if mom and dad, mom or dad or somebody can help you or maybe an older sibling brother, sister, uh, rip that toilet paper roll in half. These are going to be the ears. They don't look like ears yet. So let's see what could make them look like ears. I think if we rip them one more time down the side. Ugh. So now we have this big shape, right? So what we'd like to make out of it is something that curves a little. So mine already curves by accident, kind of like that. So I'm going to rip it a little more. These don't have to be perfect, perfectly perfect little curves. They could be like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to tape them to our box like that. And they will look more or less like ears. So here's the shape that we tore out of the paper. Uh, out of the paper roll and we're going to take these corners and fold them make little triangles and we're going to press the fold really hard with our nail and that's going to be how we stick them onto our box and my thought is I think that looks pretty funny already. Uh, my thought is that this is going to be the nose of the mouse and that the ears are going to be like here and that the eyes will be up on top of the box. And of course the tail will attach to the back. So have this box be pointy, point edge on towards you. And let's just see if this looks right. Let's tape this ear down. I think it'll be funny. So we're taping the tab that we've made and we're taping it to the box like that, right? Does that make sense? Okay, well, so <laughs> that is a one-eared mouse. So let's make sure that the poor little uh, creature has another ear. So we've got the remaining half of our toilet paper roll. We're going to rip it down the side uh, like that. Hmm. Let's see how we can make a curved shape out of this. It's sort of already curved there. I think I could continue the curve like that. That's sort of a curve. You know, <laughs> You have to use your imagination a lot in art, don't you? Okay, that's kind of a curve, just nod. <laughs> okay, and then same thing again. We want this ear to be attached to the box like this, so we need to make corners that we can easily tape to the box. So we fold back these corners and we're going to, that looks kind of cute, doesn't it? Again, just nod. <laughs> you don't have to agree. Okay, so there I'm going to tape these down onto the box like this. 
Mm. Looking very mousy already. Okay, and this one in between is a little tricky, but I know you can do it like that. Okay, so we've got <laughs> we've got two ears. This will be a nose someday, but we don't have to worry about that right now. And we're going to, this is the back of our mouse. And of course, on the back, right here, we're going to attach the tail. Uh, we can do that now. I think you might as well do it now, just to remind yourself where the back of the mouse is. And we're just going to tape the tail onto the end. It might end up getting some, uh, it might end up getting a little sort of dirty with paper mache paste, but I think it's gonna be all right. So we have a little bit of leftover stuff. We don't worry about that. This is how our mouse is going to start. And next we're going to add the paper mache. And I'll show you how to do that uh, right now. So one thing that's pretty important about <laughs> paper mache is not using, not wearing your nicest clothes. So I'm going to take these sleeves and roll them up <laughs> to get them out of the way. But also I have a, I have a shirt that's kind of a, uh, a like a work shirt, actually. <laughs> used to belong to my husband, but he said he didn't want it anymore. So I use this shirt as a kind of an apron or something to keep my, that's the same color as my other one. That's pretty funny, isn't it? I use this to keep the flour and water paste off my clothing. It doesn't really matter if you get it on your clothing uh, because it washes out, but, oh, I don't know. It's just easier sometimes to cover yourself with a, a smock or something, or a, a shirt. Uh, okay, so we've got our flour in a bag and we've got a bowl and we've got some water nearby and something to stir uh, our stuff with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the uh, flour, like I'm just gonna do about half the bag. And this is the tricky part. This is the tricky part that is dependent on you and how you like get a feel for this paste. What we really want here uh, is, let me check, check my video for a second. Yeah, good, okay. I just wanna make sure you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so what we want here is enough water that when we pour it into the flour and mix it with something, in this case, I just grabbed a fork, but uh, anything will do, um, that when you mix it, that you don't want it to be super goopy. Right now that's like too goopy. You want to mix it in parts like this so basically the consistency you're looking for is a paste that's a little bit like um, Elmer's glue, for instance, something like that, um, or school glue, uh, or something like a really thick soup, uh, like pea soup or a, a broccoli, broccoli and cheddar soup or something like that, something that's kind of thick. So I'm adding water in slowly in parts because you don't want to add a whole bunch of water and then make it like this stuff that's on the table. That's too thin. Okay, so that, that looks, <laughs> that looks horrible, <laughs> but it's about the right Mmm, consistency. It's sort of like a thick soup, right? Okay. Now the other ingredients that we need for paper mache, and as you probably know, it's a French term, so we could say papier mache if we really wanted to be super French about it. Okay, so there you go. That's good. And I'm gonna just put that aside. The other ingredient that we need, we've got our paste, and so now we need our newspaper. So what I've done is I've 
taken big pieces of newspaper and ripped them up into strips of newspaper. And then I've ripped these strips into squares about, about this big, more or less. Doesn't have to be, something like that, right? So now you're all set to add paper mache to your project. And uh, I'll show you that right now. So here's our mouse. We've got our paste and we've got our newspaper. So this is the fun bit. <laughs> it gets a little messy. So don't forget <laughs> to roll up your sleeves or put on a shirt that you don't, that you don't love. <laughs> and we're going to put the newspaper right into the paste. And we're going to, it, it, it only needs really to be on one side. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then use the edge of the bowl to take off the excess paste and slap it right onto your project. Here's our mouse getting his paper mache coating. And you want to go over his ears, his or her ears, over the whole box. Probably leave the tail alone, just leave the string sticking on there. You certainly want to make sure that the ears are covered. So sometimes you want to make your piece of uh, newspaper a little smaller and bend it around the ears. I hope I'm not going too fast for you, but I'm sure you get the idea. And it's messy, as you can see. My hands are getting <laughs> covered in, in paste and newspaper, but you can see how that makes the ear look really nice. Remind yourself to keep turning your project in a sort of a circle so that you end up coating all the sides evenly and that you're overlapping, that you're overlapping the pieces of news, pasty newspaper so that every inch of your project is covered. And now I bet you're asking, well, what about the underneath side? So what I do is I do the top and the sides first, and then I let it dry and this takes sometimes a day. It takes a while for it to dry properly. And then the next day I put it upside down and I finish the bottom. Now I also realized that we were talking about having these be pinatas and so you kind of have to leave an opening somewhere, right, to put uh, the candy inside. If, if you're going to use your project as a pinata. I, I don't, sometimes I don't like to, <laughs> to break the things I make, so <laughs> it's up to you. Um, so there is an opening underneath this box, but that's a bit big, right? So what I'm thinking is that you probably only want to cover part of that opening when you do the underside of the box. I'm going to keep going with this project and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's completely covered, which we're almost there, but I don't want you to have to watch me do all that. It's not so exciting and I'm sure you want to get going on your own. But anyway, as you go, keep everything nice and smooth, try to keep the pieces overlapping and especially on things like where the ears stick on try to give a little extra coverage and make the pieces small enough that you can get into those little spaces and 
and this little mouse is going to look adorable. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I think that that mouse is going to be completely adorable. It's now covered all over in paper mache, uh, except for the bottom, which as I said, leave it to dry. And then uh, the next day, go and cover, let's say about, about that much of the bottom and the little corner that remains so that you still have an opening there to put candy in if you want to use it as a pinata. Okay, and you should have enough flour left over to make more paste to do that bottom bit separately. All right, have fun with your little mouse and uh, let me know any questions you have if you are able to come to the Zoom meeting uh, next week, but otherwise have fun with your mouse and and I'll see <laughs> I'll see you later <laughs>